What's up guys, Nolan here, and today we have something half of you will think is made up or lies or maybe just coat with a thick layer of disbelief it will ever happen, and I'm okay with that. If you want to know, you'll know, and we'll see what happens down the line. Today we're talking about my planned feature list for Escape from Tarkov. I must have two dozen videos or something like that talking about one or some or all of these features over the past couple years and how they will affect the game once they're in the game. And given the circumstances and the timing with Tarkov TV tomorrow, I figured we'd go down the list again with any updated information that I have. This full list took literal years worth of attention to Tarkov TVs, Reddit posts, forum posts, comments, and tweets from the team over at BSG to accumulate. So please, if you like the video, hit the button and subscribe for more. I'd really appreciate it. Some of you may have caught a tweet that I put out a couple weeks ago talking about how I'm helping BSG with their official roadmap, which while we're on the subject, yes, BSG planned to release an actual roadmap, and it's possible that we see it tomorrow during the Tarkov TV, but I'm not counting on it. We'll see. Well, how I helped BSG is I sent them this list because this is the best accumulation of planned features I could get together based directly off answers from BSG or Nikita himself over the years. Every single one of these features was at some point either work in progress or said to be planned to be added to the game. Now the most important thing to keep in mind throughout this video is plans do change. It's completely possible none of these features, even though that, that's not going to happen, at least some of these are going to make it in, but again it's completely possible that none of these features make it in the game ever well, it's also possible that most, if not all, make it in before launch, and a few more pop up through DLC. And to be clear, personally, I do think most, if not all, of this will find its way into the game at some point, but that's just me. Let's get to the list. With all the stuff that we'll be talking about, there will be people worried about wipes, and that's why I'm starting with the full release server infrastructure. As of right now, it is still BSG's plan to have the game be split into two universes. One universe will never wipe, while the other does periodically wipe, and the two will never cross paths. In each, you will be able to create both a USEC and a bear for a total of four PMCs, one that does not wipe and one that does for both in both universes. So everyone will get what they want, theoretically, while we will cross that split the community bridge when we get to it. But personally, I think this game is plenty popular enough that it won't show any meaningful bad effects to either community. And that's both the wipe and no wipe servers. There is plenty of people that hate that their progress gets wiped, while I'd say the majority of the community really loves the early wipe race and mid wipe balance around economy and combat. Not to mention BSG themselves original plan was to stop wipes at some point. This whole race at early wipe and stuff like that is just something that came together through early access. So I think BSG will add some things to the no wipe universe that will be interesting and unique over the periodical wipe universe. Regardless, the balance between the economies of the two will definitely be different. The game is just going to work differently if they know for a fact that everybody is going to lose their progress in a couple months compared to if it stays forever. So hopefully they talk a little bit about that tomorrow, but we'll see. Next up is map to map travel. BSG have always wanted this to be an open world game where we start on streets, then we have to work our way to the coast in search of ways to escape from Tarkov. Part of the story involves finding ways to access each location, whether it be a key or knowledge of a path around checkpoints or minefields, whether we simply walk from location to location or we get a loading screen, I think BSG will figure out a way to get these locations all linked together. Most recently, Nikita mentioned if they can't get all of the maps together, then they'll just clump up as many as possible together. It might end up being streets as one location and the rest of the maps as another. Or maybe streets as one location, the middle maps like Customs, Woods, Reserve, and Interchange as a set of maps, and then the coast maps like Shoreline, Lighthouse, and Terminal all together as well. So whether we can openly walk from map to map or there will be a loading screen, it still has the desired outcome. You can move from location to location without having to go to your hideout or run out of time. In lore, there's a massive underground tunnel system that links everything together, or at least most things together. So that could be the system that allows for this to work smoothly. Past the existence of the underground network in lore, that's speculation though. We don't actually know how they're going to connect all the maps. It's just that this tunnel system could be one of them. Now, speaking of Terminal a second ago, we don't know what's going on with Terminal. We thought it would be discussed by now, but it is in limbo, publicly speaking. Speculation leads to it could become the map where you access arena mode from the base game or associated with a way to escape from Tarkov. It's really a coin flip in my mind. It could do either at this point. In terms of other maps, town and suburbs are going to be DLC. They are not going to be accessible on launch, and Streets of Tarkov will continue to be updated with new areas into the future, building by building, street by street, if they have to. Speaking of DLC, we have the Clans DLC with a group stash. Some people are worried about RMT. I would say just make it so that you can't change clans more than once a week, and anyone who has access to a clan stash that was regularly boosted up or deposited by somebody that was cheating gets a 60-day ban. I'm sure there's proper ways of doing that. I'm sure you're going to be able to poke holes in that, but you get what I mean. going to be something that we actually 
actually do need to worry about. We'll see what happens. Scav Life DLC, basically what we do with our PMCs now, but with scavs. More advanced features, a stash of some kind, traders, and it's still based on randomized characters. So based on your karma level, you can even earn the chance to spawn as a scav boss and everything beneath. So that's bodyguards, that's rogues, that's all that stuff. Actually, as I'm reading this, maybe not rogues because of how the faction system works, but we'll see. I have a very good feeling that this is still happening given the DLC title and how scavs will affect the ecosystem going into the future. We need people to want to play as scavs and do well as scavs. Winter and advanced weather DLC. I know this is still happening for sure because just recently Nikita himself admitted that they had snow working in Tarkov already, but it was too taxing with the current setup. Someday they'll get it working for real, I'm confident, especially since it's DLC. Now what's in question and really sort of assumed is that it will be free DLC, otherwise how would that work for people without it? I'm not sure myself, let me know if you have any ideas. Arena mode. Arena mode is happening, there is no question about that, and to learn everything that we have on it right now, I just did a video a few days ago, I'll link it in the description. Hopefully we see and hear a lot more about it in the Tarkov TV tomorrow. Along with Arena, we have the helmet cams and the post-raid replay system, both of which is actively work in progress, where BSG have already said that they will test it in Arena, and if it works in Arena, then they will attempt to bring it to the base game. So fingers crossed on that one. Full loadout presets I know will make it in eventually. It's exactly how it sounds. You click one button and purchase what you need to purchase or equip what you need to equip for that entire loadout. The only thing in question is the economy after release and whether it will be as, for lack of a better word, open as it is now. The flea still gets us access to powerful equipment and it's possible BSG make changes to that. Nikita doesn't like metas and they want this game to be tough, so expect some changes once the game is feature complete and we can see how everything meshes together properly. Speaking of the flea market, I'm not sure if BSG still plan to add the auction house as well. That's in limbo, but I haven't heard a definitive no yet. Included in that discussion is the flea market only being accessible through the Intel center in your hideout as well, because you'll need the laptop and Wi-Fi in order to connect to it. I could be wrong, but I think that is the actual plan still, while the level-based unlock that we have right now is just placeholder. Staying with economy, it's also possible BSG still plan to have all of the traders in game. In fact, I think they still do. So we will need to physically meet each of the traders like we do with Lightkeeper in order to access their inventories and shops. And we might not get to access them out of raid the same way we do now, at least not until you have the Intel Center, same with the flea market. There might be waiting times for deliveries, or we have to walk to the traders just like Stalker or Destiny or any other RPG like this in order to get what we want to purchase. I'll be very clear once again, I believe it is BSG's plan to still have all traders in raid, but I do not know how much they'll limit us from accessing them. I don't know if we will have to, in all cases, go and meet them physically in order to purchase anything from them. For sure, expect more in raid traders and quest givers similar in function to Lightkeeper. Speaking of Lightkeeper, that is not the end of his quest line. There are a lot more to go, and I personally still think he has a way for us to escape from Tarkov at the end of his quest line. Also, I've made a video talking about this before, but I think Rizzy will become a character in game who we can meet and get quests from as well, but BSG haven't confirmed that yet. I just think they're putting way too much effort into his story in particular, and again, I'm talking about Rizzy here, to not make him a character in some way. Now, tied into this a little bit is PMC Karma. It's very much in limbo, but I think it will still make its way into the game somehow. If you don't know what it is, I have several videos discussing it, and it is the basis of the friendship between the Yusek and the Bear in the Raid series. It's going to be BSG's attempt to make most of us care about taking a digital life and think twice about who we are looking at down the barrel of a rifle. If it's a friend, then you have a higher chance of surviving together. I think it's super interesting and creates a really cool dynamic that you just don't get from most games these days, and I really hope they do find a good way to implement it, and that is without hindering people's way they want to play the game. Regardless, again, though, I know they'll find a way to get it in the game in some form. I think it's too important to them. I'll rattle off some odds and ends features here. Switching hands with the main weapon, I do believe is still planned, so that's left hand shooting. Low ready and high ready, I do still believe is planned. Loot dead drops, where you can just drop off gear to your hideout without actually leaving the raid, I believe is still planned. Custom color and design armbands, that one can get a little bit sketchy, but I still believe it's planned. And ghillie suits, I believe, are still planned, but I'm skeptical they'll be the big bushy ones that cover everything. I think they'll be more discreet clothing choices from Ragman, like sort of what we have now. Weapon paints, I believe, are still planned, where we need to find the spray paint and then do it ourselves. And also, for some reason, this isn't in the game yet, but who knows why. Actually moving attachments up and down rails on weapons, like your optics, your lights, and all that stuff, I believe that is still planned. Moving on, we have the UN faction. The United Nations should make its way into the game at some point. It's really important to the lore. Same goes for the Russian military. The Black Division is the new cultists, so BSG are keeping quiet about them, but I believe they will find their way into the game in some way, shape, or form, and possibly be very important. BSG 
have already even been working on a black division armband so they will at least be in game by name somehow the russian special forces or gru were never officially planned unfortunately i do have a couple of videos from a year or two ago saying that they were going to be coming to the game and how they were going to work but the russian special forces or gru specifically as a faction were never fully confirmed but they were being discussed as the faction that would be the anti-usec faction like the rogues are to bears however the un or russian military could take up that role just fine since usex are the bad guys so it's possible that the un or russian military do that there will be many more bosses bsg wants several bosses per map and even a second one or three for factory a way to sort of gloss over that would be to allow bosses to spawn on multiple maps just like the goons regardless there will be new phases and new names for bosses including the car dealership boss on streets there should also be a boss with a riot shield at some point too also believe on streets while on the subject of that riot shield it could also become something that you can pick up bsg have discussed in the past how it wouldn't be something that you could pick up like Tagilla's sledgehammer we'll have to see what happens the btr taxi is already moving around behind the scenes so that will be coming to streets at some point and i could be wrong but i also believe bsg plan to add more locations for taxi services like that but it might not be the btr it might be a truck or something while the train will eventually bring you to other locations instead of just extracting you and they're even going to add other trains and they're going to add weapons to the trains so that you can use them while you're going along i believe all of that is still planned mines and explosives are coming and there will be minefields that separate lots of the maps from other maps where we can learn of safe pathways through them or just pick up a mine detector to navigate them ourselves along with that there was talk of dismemberment a long time ago but unless it's just for show i don't see why they need to add that to the game and probably won't they'll probably cut it for time because that's a lot of craziness that's going to happen with that the systems involved with getting somebody with no legs to extract would be insane the realism aspect is you know we die every raid practically so if we die then how are we still alive and playing so I, that would make sense i guess we just grow back our limbs if that happens and there will be body dragging and unconscious state so maybe it'll work out i just think it's gonna be one of those things that they cut for time because i don't think it needs to be in the game speaking of body dragging and unconscious state they are still planned and potentially work in progress already they're coming with the animation rework i believe which involves vaulting and climbing ladders of which they have already seen a tease of what i believe is vaulting from nikita so vaulting at least is work in progress while ladders might still come later there was a bit of a discussion previously about how ladders are going to be more difficult because where are the ladders going a lot of the roofs and things like that that are accessible only by ladders are not modeled correctly or it could lead for exploits while most vaulting locations will just be walls that we can kind of already jump over anyway i just really really hope they figure out a way to just let us pick our legs up just a little bit more i don't want a full vault i don't want to have to jump over something just pick your leg up just a little bit to get over that curb or that box or something anybody that's tried to jump up the back of interchange there you know exactly what i'm talking about you should just be able to step up onto that and you can't hopefully that's included but i'm getting away from the subject here the details for unconscious state have been gone over in past videos if you need a refresher i'll link that in the description going back to the subject of explosives from before you can breach doors and open up parts of the map that you wouldn't be able to get to otherwise including extracts that is very much already work in progress as well as of course planned so breaching blowing prying and breaking open doors and certain walls on locations is again still planned as far as i know not only are they planned but they are important to bsg so i think all of that is still going to make its way into the game if not for launch then soon after speaking of extracts expect a lot more and new types where you can rebuild a motor and a broken car find a key on a boss or special enemy that unlocks a door find maps find fuel for a boat or truck etc lots of ideas coming from bsg on various types of unique extracts not just for a location but for tarkov itself radiation and hazardous environments is for sure still planned and important to the lore around a terror group expect equipment to help with that begin to actually work to help with that in game tied into the hazardous environments would be permadeath through radiation poisoning and lasting effects also tied into that would be addiction from medications as far as i know all are still planned and seen as important features by bsg i just did a video discussing permadeath not too long ago check that out in the description if you need to as well there will be more skills added to the game at some point many of which already have icons in the game but aren't being used as far as i know the pmc unique skills and all the other skills that we have icons for are still planned if not work in progress to eventually make their way into the game radios i believe are not only planned but already work in progress where they will play a part in tracking down certain people as well as sometimes players nikita talked about being able to find player frequencies and then track them down based on the clarity of the transmissions or through scanners speaking of already work in progress we have the armor hitbox and custom rig feature that i've been talking about for years already they will make their way into the game at some point if you don't know about it tldr armor only covers where armor is actually covering after 
this update and you'll be able to choose what types of pouches are on your vests as well as what type of armor plates are in it. Then we have all of the weapons. There was a time when Tarkov wanted to be the encyclopedia of guns for a video game, but then they realized how much work that actually is, so they turned it down a little bit, more like significantly. Regardless of that though, we still have a list here and I'm expecting to see incendiary and gas grenades along with the feature around coughing without a respirator on, even in regular smoke. That stuff is not fun to sit in. So if you toss a smoke grenade and especially if you toss an incendiary or a gas grenade into a room that somebody is sitting in and they don't have a respirator on, they're going to want to get out of that room or possibly go unconscious. We'll see what happens with that. The saw, the PKP Pekinig, how do you pronounce that? I don't know. With the scorpion backpack, possibly on the streets boss or the RPD or PKM, one of those belt fed machine guns for that streets boss specifically, but also just in the game, there will be belt fed machine guns in the game. The FAMAS is planned. The honey badger is planned. The G3 is planned. The ACR is planned. The CZ Bren 2 is planned. SVT 40 might be work in progress already, but planned. SR 3M is planned. AN 94 planned. The AK 12, AK 308, and that line or family of AKs is already work in progress confirmed by Nikita just recently. DSR 1 planned. SV 18 planned. Desert Eagle planned. 50 Beowulf weapons are planned. 6.8 caliber weapons planned. 408 Shy Tech are planned. On top of all that stuff, basically all of the weapons from Contract Wars or Hired Ops should make their way into Tarkov because it is the same universe, as well as location and people. Launchers already have an icon in game and are still planned. At least the RPG 7 platform, but the AT4 and RPG 26 and RPG 30 are also planned. It's been well over a year since those have been discussed, but again, still planned as far as we know. When it comes to the guns especially, but also this entire list, any of it can show up in DLC 2 or probably your more accurate title would be more like post-launch content. With the amount of stuff that BSG are keeping for release, it makes sense that they want to get it out the door in one piece and then support it for several years with extras. Speaking of what they are keeping for release, we have the story. All of the main storyline quests and who knows how many of these features are being saved for full release so we can all experience them ourselves at once for the first time. Absolutely terrifying me personally and I really hope that they get at least the features out to us before then. Otherwise, they're just asking for a lot to go wrong. Please, BSG, if you are listening, try and get as much as possible out to the entire community so that we can test it, whether it be you switch up the names, you switch up the locations, whatever. Just please let us test these features before you go for launch where so much is counting on the launch. Anyway, the Targot TV tomorrow starts at noon EST and I'll be taking notes for a summary video afterwards, of course. I'll also be tweeting while watching, so be sure to follow me on Twitter or join the Discord for the minute by minute stuff. But that's all for now, guys. If you like this video, hit the button, subscribe for more, or let me know what you think in the comments. Also leave any questions you might have down there. Check out my other channels for other games right here. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a nice day. See you guys.